Learning is not something that school has a monopoly on, right? Learning happens when you're still inside your mother's womb. Learning happens every day, all day, wherever you are for the rest of your life, right? School needs to be a place that, that honors the fact that they don't have a monopoly on this. That what schools can do, how they can serve children on their learning journeys is to help them put it to action, to help them make it meaningful in their real world and connect it to communities right now. And, and give them that power. So behind me is a three-story high bamboo building, perhaps the largest in the world, but it really is the essence of wall-lessness, and that's the concept behind our education is that learning can happen anywhere at any time and we're always educating children to think that way and hence um, the lifelong learning aspects of, of, of having this experience. We're in Bali, Indonesia. We have 430 students ages three years old through grade 12. And we opened our doors in, in August of 2009 and the school was founded by John and Cynthia Hardy who really wanted to create a school that was focused on educating for sustainability that didn't have classroom walls, that had children outside all the time, and learning from a young age to really appreciate and love nature, and then grow up and learn how to take care of it and be advocates for the environment. Um, so we have a real focus on educating for sustainability. It's certainly our environment uh, that we live in. We are always connected to the ground and the earth. I am outside 14 hours a day, if not more, all year round, and so are our children. And this is where children, I think, naturally belong, is dirty and grimy and connected to the earth and, and, and running around and feeling exhausted because they were running in nature and then and learning from nature and seeing how it all connects together. We educate for sustainability because the global issues of today and connecting to our world are issues of sustainability, right? You, you need to understand the principles of sustainability and how complex systems work and interact with each other if you're going to find the leverage points on these systems to steer them towards sustainability. So when you look at the global issues of our world, be they human systems, economic systems, political systems, or our natural systems, the ecosystems, our problems with them are because they're steering away from sustainability and we need to find ways to turn them back. We want to be the best at educating for sustainability. We want children to love going to school, and we want a joyful community that all embraces learning, all together, so that we really know uh, what impact we want to make on the world through the children that, that come through our door. We're free to follow the path as we see fit, rather than constricted by, by national or, or even local curriculum standards and test standards. We don't have to teach to a test. We don't believe in that. Uh, there's a place for testing and there's a place for assessment to be sure.
but it doesn't have to look like a multiple choice test that is the same for every student. Uh, we believe in really different learning journeys and we believe in honoring the different ways that students learn and that comes out in the assessments quite a bit. They look quite different for different students and for different courses and so I think that, that we have a lot of freedom here at Green School to, to do it as how we see fit. But we do have a hard time articulating it because it is part of the hidden curriculum of Green School. So one thing that makes us very, very different is that we don't have a set national or international curriculum. We have, but we're also not winging it and we're also not making it up. Without teachers knowing it uh, and administrators knowing it, we have collaborated with you by reading about the best curriculum in the world, by bringing the ideas that our teachers bring in, um, by bringing in the ideas that our guests bring in, and basically taking the best bits of education that are happening around the world and putting them together, sometimes with tweaks, sometimes we'll add little bits and bites to it, but we've actually got to curate, gotten to curate our curriculum by using the best. I think the big differentiator is that freedom. And, uh, and taking that responsibility of having the freedom and being really, really careful about it and making sure that what we're doing is working and, and look for ways that we can improve it. I'm five and a half years old and this is Green School. I was born in California but now I live in Bali. I speak four languages, English, Russian, Indonesian and my own language and I'm in kindergarten. We like to focus on authentic learning. It creates an incredible atmosphere of collaboration and intercultural dialogue um, and interconnectedness. That develops skills in children rather than feeding them content and asking them for recall. So instead of giving the students tons of information and then asking them to recall it on a test, what we're doing is we're using content as a way to develop skills in children. Adaptability, uh, collaboration, communication, it builds all of those really key skills, many people call them 21st century skills. Critical thinking, creative thinking, problem solving. Um, at Green School here we've, we've vetted a lot of those and we've created our own Green School skills that include those. Um, we use those as well. We bring on top of that um, a really strong focus on your creativity. We have a ton of arts. A lot of those arts do bring in collaboration but they also bring in culture. Um, as well as something we're really focusing on which is systems thinking and systems learning. Um, that everything is connected and that you can find connections between everything and everyone. Adapt and they include awareness, right? And, and that brings personal sustainability into it as well. Being aware of yourself and how to take care of yourself so that you can then connect to your communities and understand how to take care of those systems. So we look to foster those skills. We want our graduates to be really eclectic collaborators. We want them to be creative problem solvers. We want them to be adept at adapting to different situations, strong critical thinkers, real clear communicators so they can take their ideas, share them with lots of people and, and, and help steer our systems towards sustainability. Um, on top of that, we want to make sure that we connect our students now to the real world, um, have them working with their communities now, rather than as an incubation place to get them ready to engage at 18, we say, hey, children of all ages have value in their communities right now, let's have school 
be a safe portal for these students to get involved and engage. Finally, we want to make sure that schools make room for students' passion projects. We want to make sure that students take uh, autonomy of their own learning. And the best way to do that, we believe, is to help them identify their interests, identify their passions, find their own particular niche in the world, and how they can make that particular interest and passion uh, something that contributes to society in a positive way. And I forgot the one thing that kind of bridges all this is, is uh, blurring the subject lines, integrating subjects, right? The real world doesn't put everything in neat little boxes. Everything is integrated and interconnected. Our subjects in school should do the same as much as possible. So we try to, we try to get all our subjects talking together and working together in all of our classes. It's sometimes hard to tell, is this a literacy class or a humanities class or even a science or an art? all of them together as much as possible. And that's kind of the basis of what we're trying to do here. We're trying to keep it real, keep the learning authentic, and prepare our students to engage with a, with a rapidly evolving and complex world that demands systems thinkers who can understand how it all works together and how they can find their place in it and steer it toward a more sustainable path. It's not all love all the time, it's actually pushing each other in this really respectful way um, and being really strong and being a really strong group of people who are all brought together by this single purpose has been pretty profound. Um, and we've been lucky in that a parent body comes here is also looking for a real difference in education. So in general, we have a very supportive parent body to support our, our progressive ideas. the best ideas and to um, help see where they fit in the program and see how they would improve the program and see how um, you know parents can and help parents to understand the value of those programs. So it have been the dynamic educators that are attracted to this project. Um, so we get a lot of people with a lot of really brilliant ideas that come here and share them with us. We have a parent body who's very, very active and very willing to share their expertise. So I think the angels are the people that have been attracted to this project and been willing to, to really roll their sleeves up and to put themselves out there and to help others who are putting themselves out there. And, and then if individuals like yourselves who are educators, who are looking to see what's going on in the world that we can learn from and that we can share ideas with. Uh, and that's really special about being here uh, is that a lot of people do make the trek into this jungle. Teachers that are looking for something different. Teachers that are passionate about making a change in education. People often talk about what's the magic of green school, right? Because you spend some time on this campus and you can feel the energy and the students are happy and they're thrilled and they want to come to school. And for me, 
that magic comes from the relationships, the relationships you uh, foster between the students, but also very importantly, the relationships of the teachers and the students, that the teachers are able to very humbly look at the students and, and talk to them as co-learners. Sometimes you can have a lot of support for change and sometimes you can have a little bit of support for change. One of the most profound things we do is to have mindfulness in our mindfulness program. Uh, and what's great about that is you can sneak it in. If you don't have a lot of support from others, you can sneak it in. We, we do a whole curriculum, but we also at 2 p.m. every day just have a mindfulness gong. It lasts 20 seconds, it goes three times in a row, it's three deep breaths, and it has had a profound impact, profound on our behavior, uh, issues that we've had to deal with and, and also our own mental health um, as, as a faculty. If there's any way, even if it's in a little box in your room, to get your hands in the dirt and to grow something that you grow from a seed and you eat it, that's profound. Any kind of project you can do, and I'm not talking about projects that are sort of pre-described, like make this presentation or make this poster board. Can you identify something in your school or even in your classroom, can be really small, that needs fixing or that needs improving or that you can work on together with your students? And they'll have this incredible ownership, they'll, they'll have a project that they worked on, that they got to complete, that they got to see um, impacted the community in some way, shape or form. And part of the challenges is that there are not limitations. Right? It's, it's hard to really create your path when your constraints are wide open, right? Smaller things you can do classroom level, that's something you can do. You can do on your own in your classroom. There's so much more to these students' lives than learning to read and write and even think critically and whatnot. They have social and emotional needs and so much going on in their families and outside of school. And it's, it's just really important to know the students as people. That is critical. That is educating for sustainability. That every action, uh, there's a reaction. And every reaction around the world has impact and has consequences. Um, or it has positivity, but you really need to understand all of those elements as you're making change. It really take seriously these global issues of the world and, and the fact that they're issues of sustainability. And that embedding the principles of sustainability and learning to be complex systems thinkers into curriculum, in any curriculum, is not difficult. It really can be done and it's vital that we do it. And it's vital that we develop these skills in our children to engage in this rapidly evolving world.